Downy makes clothes softer, fresher, and better. We breathe life into your laundry. Hesitate, I gotta tell you, but I wanna wait. Never thought that feelings could disappear. Why the sorry never feel sincere, but you gotta hear. Try, try, try to reach you It's so difficult 
everyone, I'm Tosh and Mouse, and this is Keeper. Hello. We are co-casters for the League of Legends esports team at CMU. Um, this is actually going to be our first scrim in the tournament um, against NKU Esports. Mm -hmm. Should be an exciting match. Excited to see how our players do for their first match. Yeah. Um, we've currently got uh, six people on this team. One of them isn't here, so we have our substitute playing. Um, and it looks like we've got them picking out their bands and all right now. Um, NKU is the blue team, so they will be going first on picking their first three people. So we've just got to wait and see who they're going to pick. Mm -hmm. So. Perfect. So you said you've played before, right? Yeah, I've, I've got a decent amount of experience playing the game. Um, maybe not as knowledgeable as I should be for how much I play. And <laughs> yourself? Um, I, I'll be honest, I only started touching it, like, probably in November. Um, I watched a bit when the esports team was first starting here in the fall, um, because this is a completely new team that we've set up. Um, the varsity had gone away for a while, and now they're back. But it does look like they are picking their initial bands and all, so... Let's see. Um... So it looks like NKU's got a uh, Karma, Seraphine, Fiora, Lucian, and Udir. I can't see who chose which ones, but that is a very interesting setup. Do you know anything about those ones? Um, yeah, so based on the picks, it looks like it will be Fiora in the top lane likely, um, Udir jungle, Lucian, and Karma for the bot lane and Fio uh, and Seraphine mid laning likely yeah i actually didn't know for the longest time that seraphine could be used mid lane until i saw our own um ari was using it and then i'm seeing um morgan on zion on our side which i know that means bot end support mm -hmm. and i love that one Cassante probably top do you think um it could be Cassante or jack's top uh, yeah both of those could either be top or jungle okay. and then definitely in azir mid um, yeah. a lot of potential there i can see that and, ooh, those bands are definitely interesting, but they're banned. They're gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll admit, I've only really played Morgana, so I love her. I know her. Most of these, I just know what they end up doing to me. <laughs> yeah, Morgana's stuns can definitely be very brutal. Um, let's see. I do know that a couple of these are repeat ones that we've seen used. Because um, I have a list of everyone's favorites. I... Oh, I feel bad. I know Alex likes Fiora. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, it was nice seeing you guys for one second. We are back <laughs> on to the actual pick. Okay, they're showing off some bands. And we're doing the official just bands right now. Um, so they had pre-drafted it, but this is just going through the motions of actually setting it up in-game. And it looks like Fiora is being taken, and that is by Cleave. Um, and let's see, Chaos is picking next. Okay. So All right. yeah. Looks like we have the Jackson jungle. Beautiful, up against the Udir, and then... This is mid lane, I believe, is getting picked next. So Oh, yep. interesting. Lucian mid. Okay. Not something I see often. Yeah. It looks like we popped back up for a second for the bands. And then let's see. Who is Cleve going to ban? Oh. Did not get a chance to see who that was, but that was fast. <laughs> they know what they want. I think it was... Oh. Not okay, sure, actually. Yes. We have the Thresh ban. Yep, and it looks like we're getting that Zaya still. And that's Ari picking it. Ari is our bot lane. Um, they did pretty good. Um, I do believe they played Zaya a good couple times, so that'll be good. Well, hopefully, if they're picking the character, they're pretty familiar with them. Yeah. Taking it into an official match. <laughs> That is fair. It is their first one um, that they're going to be playing any sort of official match, so it'll be interesting to see how they do. Um, I know some of them are feeling like a bit excited, a bit nervous for mm -hmm. it, but we all are. 
And then we have Morgana down in support and they are preparing for loadout. And we get to wait for roughly three minutes to catch up with them. All right. Mm -hmm. So while that goes on, we can kind of just talk about what's going on a bit. <laughs> All right, should be an interesting match bot lane with Seraphine and Karma. Seraphine has a lot of poke potential, so they're gonna have to watch out for that. Mm -hmm. and I believe it's Seraphine ADC as well, which again, not something often. Yeah, I've never, I don't think I've seen that one. I've seen her as mid or support, so this is definitely interesting. Um, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen Zaya and Morgana together. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting combination. Morgana, just with the stuns, is always very useful, as long as she can hit those off. Definitely a lot of potential for big burst damage because that's what Zaya likes to do. Especially if the target is stationary, she can line up those feathers and get some massive mm -hmm. damage. Hit. And with that stun, that'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. There's that spectator delay for a couple minutes. We've got roughly just over two and a half minutes before we'll be able to swap you back to the big screen. Um, I'm interested to see how top lane turns out because yeah, that, that definitely will just be... Who is better? Both characters have uh, a lot of strengths to them. Fiora, great at bursting down characters, um, but Cassante has a lot of sustain. So Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about how Cassante can very quickly steamroll into something bigger. Yes, definitely. He has a lot of damage for how tanky he is. Mm -hmm. Out of all of these characters, who would you say you'd be the most worried about keeping an eye out for? I probably have to go with the Cassante because just in general, top laners can get out of hand, especially if oh, they yeah. they have a big lead. So mm -hmm. Cassante just takes that to the next level because if he gets fed, then he yeah. becomes a big problem. Same with Jax. Okay. So do you think that the jungler should probably focus on helping top lane more than anything? Or try to stay away so it's not potentially feeding? Uh, it definitely depends on how the game is going. Because if that Udyr can come up and gank yeah. top lane and get a kill off, that would be really big for the, the Fiora. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um... <laughs> Admittedly, I do not know how these teams scale for the best part. I do have to look more into that. I believe that Cassante scales really well for late game. Um, I know some of them though, like Seraphine. Seraphine can be good early game, but mm -hmm. if you if you let her get big, she can she can do a lot on her own, which is very yeah. interesting. Um, overall, I suppose it also will just have to wait and see which items are getting picked and all of that because. Mm -hmm. Depending on the routes they go, depending on if they have like specific runes they like, they could go anywhere with this. And then we've just got about 30 seconds left, um, and then we'll get to see the start of the game. And our little screen disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, the, the Jacks should have uh, a pretty easy time running around between mid and top and containing with their jungle just because he is really good against characters that rely on auto attacks but as for the bot lane he might have a harder time because they are definitely uh ap focused yeah all right and it looks like we can finally start to see the screen for you guys we do have us uh cmu coming from red side up at the top and then nku is coming up from the bottom Let's see how this goes. All right. A lot of people in position, making sure there are no invades. Yeah, a lot of just everyone's kind of staring at each other. That's interesting. I see that the jungler for CMU is the one hovering around in the mid lane, and the mid is the one hovering in the jungle. <laughs> that's, that's a tactic. I'm not sure where that'll go, but I'm interested. Alright, actually, we have most of our 
CMU and NKU are both just hovering more in the jungle than anything else it looks like. It's like NKU has put a ward in top river, keeping vision there, making sure no invades as the mid laner stays in their lane and the top laner looks for any opportunity to get some poke damage in. Yeah, and it looks like there was a bit of a damage trade-off over with Frost, and I want to say it was... Who, who was it they were fighting? I could not see the name, but they did get some damage off on their opponent for a second there. Let's see. It looks like we're just watching a bit of uh, damage for damage going on. Frost and Ari up, and Ari's already popped out of the grass, no longer hiding. Oh, Frost tried for it. <laughs> Missed the root, but it looks like yeah. the Seraphine managed to get some poke in. Mm -hmm. I wish I knew what runes that the Morgana had, because I do know there is one that allows her to freeze them in place a little more, mm -hmm. and that would have been very interesting. I believe that's Glacial Augment. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I love Glacial Augment. All right, we've got our first level ups going on. A root Ooh. hit, but they did not seem to... Be able to take that much advantage of it. Yeah, Ari was already getting some damage taken. Again, it's going to be rough for these bot laners just because Seraphine has so much poke. Yeah. All right, and we've just got a bit of minions going on in the middle. Velma is going around getting some of their camps done fast, just sneaking on through. <laughs> yeah. Not really time for them to interfere with anything else yet. Just has to level up a bit. Like blue side bot lane has crashed into tower. It's happening on all three lanes actually. Blue side is making it to tower, which does give def defense for red side, but it does also mean that they're losing a bit of health over time. Yeah, there's a lot of potential right now for this Jax to be able to get a gank for how far everybody's pushed up. So we'll see if they are pushing back blue up there. Ray is still working on keeping the turret. And it looks like Akinora is walking away from uh, Kaplan's turret for a bit. With the Karma going in, hoping to get a stun off, but not able to. But it doesn't seem to matter because they still managed to get a ton of poke off. It's definitely a nice start. We see that. It's still 0 0, which is very nice. It's a calm beginning. Everyone's just trying to work on getting that gold up. And it's pretty even for the most part. Alright, we see the Udir moving in, hoping to get a gank in, and it doesn't appear that uh, the Cassante is aware. Oh, yeah. So this could be very bad. Mm hmm. definitely playing it very safe, yeah. making sure not to overextend. Um, maybe he knows that the Udyr is there, or maybe they just know that they don't know where the Udyr is, so best to play it safe. And looks like Dino is backing, hoping to recover some of that health and possibly buy an item. Mm -hmm. And we've got Velma kind of sneaking in and around. It doesn't look like they're attacking yet, they're just kind of walking on through some more. <laughs> I am curious on where Velma will go when they want to first leave the jungle. <laughs> oh, and massive damage down in bot lane. Can the Morgana protect? They cannot. And oh. there's our first blood with Karma. Ow. And there goes... There's the double kill. There goes Ari as well. They are up to zero. That is a good start for NKU. And they have... Okay, you have moved to drive. We see an alt in mid lane. They don't manage to get the kill. Mm -hmm. Top is doing a lot of damage trading right now, but who knows where that'll go. Okay, so Velma is going for the new Void Grubs and Void Mines. And I don't know how much you know about these, but these were introduced just this season. Um, so these actually come before the uh, Rift Herald now, roughly around five minutes when the first dragon comes in. Yep. And yep. they can help with like getting some stacks up and they give like a bit of a buff. Yeah, check. so it's 
true damage to towers yeah. and it also is damage over time so this is really good for being able to push towers in but we'll see if uh cmu will be able to take advantage of this buff because yeah. as of now it looks we'll see if um cmu will be able to take advantage of these void grubs because they are being pushed way back under their towers and don't seem to be able to get much damage off as of yet. Um, and and then, along with that, we see that NKU has taken the dragon while that was happening. Um, for those watching, you can actually tell how many dragons have been taken because there's going to be a little emblem underneath, um, right where all of their gold is showing how many dragons they have been taken. It looks like that was the red drake, which I believe grants uh, extra uh, AP and AD. Yep, it mainly boosts the attack power, but overall it's just a stat booster. Alright, we see that Ujir uh, going into the jungle he hits for vision and is going to steal some jungle camps. Yeah, if he'll be able to get it, we don't know because Gray is coming up, trying to at least lure him around. Oh, he is going to get hit, hit by eyes of it. Shuffle. But it looks like Velma is currently coming around. Whether it's the help is not sure yet. And then I can see that someone is hiding, it looks like Ayash is hiding from NKU, but they've come out now. Whether they were hoping someone would slip into their area is not sure if they were just trying to heal for a second. But either way, they are now out of the area. Oh, and Boss and Arya are getting hurt quite a bit oh, under the tower. Keeps them under tower, but will Ari manage to get away if we see And maybe not because going they're... In? We've got um, Velma coming in trying to deal with the damage. They almost got that kill, but they've gotten rooted, and I don't know if they'll be able to make it in time. With low health enemies. Oh. All right. We see a one for one trade. Oh, there's two. Okay. Seraphine's gone down. All right. And oh, and there another. goes Morgana. Rhino is still alive. They are channeling away for a moment. Could be for a heal, could be to get some stuff, maybe both. <laughs> no, <laughs> looks like they do have TP up, so they should be able to get back to tower very fast. Won't have to worry about the Fiora getting any tower plating yet. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Velma is going for that blue buff right now. Could definitely be useful to have, because the blue buff actually... Um, it's going to help with restoration and ability haste, which with the amount of poke damage they're getting, some some health restoration could definitely be useful right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right, we see the Udyr clearing some vision in bot lane, but he just seems to be running off and getting scuttled. Which it never hurts to have that one. <laughs> Alright, Velma is kind of just sticking around. I think having the blue jungler and all so close is kind of worrying. We see the mid laner rotating down, Ooh. trying to get the gank of the jacks. And there are... Diving in. Some but we do have Grey coming down. as well. So it's looking like a 4 and 4 Grey is Great. out of oh, position, yeah. and the Lucian ult will just absolutely oh. shred Jax. They will continue to dive under tower, cleaning and up the rest Ray. of the team. <laughs> and there goes that all of them. And just all four went down to that one. They have room to just take this turret if they have enough minions. Yeah, they will continue pushing. And it looks like mid and jungle have gone their separate ways. They've handled what they wanted. They're out. They are back to their objectives. And for those who can see, they also not only do they have a six kill lead, but they also have six K lead on gold. So yeah, they're I going to be able to push for those items a lot faster than CMU can. Definitely, CMU is definitely at a huge disadvantage at this point. They really just need to come up with a game plan in order to stabilize. Mm -hmm. Just slowly, however they can, make their way back. Yeah. Something to push because it looks like they haven't top lane, they have not been able to put any damage, it looks like, on that turret. Alright, we see that Fiora going in, but 
Dino flashes away to get under tower. Oh, the Lundgrave were on their way, but it looks like they have backed out, which is not good because it looks like Chaos and uh, Steph Top are following around, but it looks like they've just been consoled by taking Void instead. Right, and it looks like CMU does not have any vision on the grubs as of now, so they're they are just, just walking, walking away, away from it, yeah. It looks like they are rotating onto drag, hoping to make this up for uh, uh, NKU getting the grubs. And ice are immediately on there. Yes, they hit and the Lucian with the Flame of Shuffle, push them in, but it is not enough. And Unvig has come in and slain some. Blue team took Void Grubs. And it looks like they're about to get dragged as well, taking it from CMU. Yeah. That is a triple kill for the Seraphine. So, at this point, this bot lane is absolutely fed, and they are definitely something the entire team needs to look out for. Mm-hmm. We are having some technical difficulties. Just a bit pause. of a freeze. But while this freeze is going on, we can see that Red Turret was not taken down on bot lane yet, which is an interesting move, um, considering that they could have just done it, but maybe they're just leaving it to the minions for a moment to just wheedle it down for them because they had bigger plans. Um, it's definitely interesting. All right, looks All like right. we are back and running. And the dragon will be going down to the blue team. Seraphine got that kill. And ooh, what emblem is that? What dragon? Um, that is Mountain Drake provides uh, armor and magic resist. <laughs> was, uh, was that the one that just went down as well? Oh, no, sorry. I saw the little symbol. <laughs> no, I, I, I thought it was yeah. <laughs> uh, Mountain Drake. Um, that one, I believe, provides movement speed. Perfect. Yeah, Cloud Drake. All right, and we're having a bit of a freeze again. Focus. Some technical difficulties to start off our first stream. We're all we're all <laughs> having fun here, including the client. <laughs> all right, and it looks like they might Blue Team will take the first turret as the There it goes. Yeah. Down by step top. And Dino is still defending that top turret. He is trying to keep a fight up. But it looks like Fiora is just trying to get whatever damage she can up there. Gray, Ari, and Frost are kind of out of position. Gray has swapped over to bot lane while Frost and Ari are looking more mid. It's definitely interesting to do a two-on-one swap, but sometimes you gotta mix things up. It's not uncommon for uh, supports to occasionally roam once the lane is either won or lost in order to help their other lanes. Mm -hmm. So that's likely what we were seeing there. Yeah, it's just interesting that the mid lane has also left. <laughs> Alright, but it looks like we do have Seraphine up here too now. Getting some damage on that mid turret. Whittling it down rather fast. Ooh, Ari took a lot of damage. Oh, and Dino. we see that Fiora ult. But she is not able to get the final two hits off in order to kill the Cassante. And down goes Velma. They are just shoving wave, getting the damage in as they can. Oh, uh, that Void Grub damage is just insane on these turrets, helping them completely annihilate them. Yeah. And and Karma will get turret. another kill. And in the corner, I could see that Red was starting to take um, the Rift Herald, so if they get that, that could be the difference to a whole nother turret. Absolutely. Cost has been pushed up to the top mid turret, but it looks like that is not really stopping the blue side. NKU is just going for as much damage as possible. And they do have that buff going on. Alright. They're doing quite the damage to that turret. At this point, you would hope to see uh, Jax rotate, try to get the gank, but it may just be that uh, 
the Seraphine and Karma are just too strong at this point for them to be able to contend. So, yeah. So Jax oh, and Dino has gone down. And that is the first death for, um, on top lane. Very slow game for top lane as usual. All the islands is playing for yourself <laughs> most of the time. But we see a big fight mid lane, and they will be able to kill Dump Truck. It looks like they took that turret at the same time. Frost is kind of not sure where to go. It looks like he's not sure if he needs to stay back and defend the turrets or if he needs to go out and make a push really quick. But Ray is on their own over by bot side, so. They're trying to handle their own, yeah, but it looks like it is a two-on-one, and at this point, the turret does not seem to be stopping NKU. They are taking that damage for fun. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they can just burst them down so quickly yeah. that the turret doesn't even seem to matter. Mm -hmm. And again, that void grab damage, that's just a massive influence on the game for how fast they can take these turrets. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that turret is about to go down. There it goes. There's only one turret left on the red side up in the top lane, but it looks like Fiora is... It looks like um, Fiora is trying to whittle it down on top. And then we can see that Dragon is coming up soon. There are roughly 45 seconds until that comes up. Do you think that NKU will go for it trying to get closer to that Dragon Soul stack, or do you think they're just going to try to finish the game fast? Uh... I definitely think that they'll go for drag, um, just because that'll help them push the game even more in their favor, but it does look like CMU has a decent amount of vision and can hopefully do something about it. Alright, it looks like we've got to get a bit more going on in mid lane right now. We've got, we've got three pushing up, and that is four of our five people are currently Big move, but they won't be able to take any advantage of it as the Lucian dashes through the wall and gets a kill. And Dino and Fiora seem to finally be noticing that something's happening because both have independently left that tower and they are coming for the big fight. I do not think it's enough to stop them though because Dino is getting chased down. Hovering near the turret is not stopping them. Oh, but, but they did get the kill. Dino kills. will manage to get a kill on the Cassante. That is some big shutdown gold, especially after that play that they just had. I am impressed. I thought that was uh, I thought that was going to be a penta kill for a moment there, but no. Look at Dino go, getting a couple more kills in the process. That just shows the power of Cassante. Even how, however far up ahead you are, you know, he's <laughs> always strong. I guess I gotta believe more in the Cassante. <laughs> No, it looks like red is spreading out. Some of them are hovering a bit closer to top, but they are all leaving. It looks like they're going to try to push out, see what they can do. They are down very low with their turrets all gone, but if they can get a push, I've seen it happen for less. <laughs> all right, Ari is just defending from minions, does not want to let those take over. Like, Lucian is congregating to drag, getting ready to take it, and... CMU doesn't see to even notice. Well, no. they do have great vision around drag. There's no vision in the drag kit itself, so they have no idea even how much health it's at to be able to steal it. No, yeah. It does look like they're trying to get their red buff and blue buff off, but that's not going to compare quite so much to another dragon. Lucy's having grouped up here, may be able to make a play happen. Mm -hmm. But this Lucian is just, just super strong at this point, so they do need to play safe, even if it's just him and the Fiora. Yeah, and it looks like it is going to be a 5v4 because Asante has come back up. He did use his TP to get back from, or at least a recall to get back in. But it looks like they're all trying to hover on that turret. They're hoping for that turret damage to hurt the the NKU, but it doesn't look like it's going to be as much as they were hoping. Another two in the turns by the Nexus is half down. Ari has gone down to Chaos. Oh, we've got a double kill. That Jax is down. That was a big hit with the Serena Shuffle from Swag, but at this point in the game, it just wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. They have too much health and too much sustain for them being pushed into the first even to matter. And Dino is alive, but it's just Hiding away to not die is not helping in this case, and it is 
a bit too late for CMU and they have gone down to NKU for the first of the matches. Definitely a rough game for CMU. It seems like that bot lane was just able to to get a few picks early game and then they just kept it rolling. Yeah, so. it it steam ball very fast. So I guess I have to ask. You could go back. What do you think they should fix from that game? What do you think they could do to do better in round two? Definitely, uh, hopefully some more ganks from the jungler. That's a very typical thing to say, blame the jungler. <laughs> um, as a top laner, I am uh, a bit biased, but uh, uh, maybe take advantage of how far they push up because we saw early game that most of the enemy team was under the turrets, so that was perfect timing for the CMU jungler to go in and help secure a kill. Yeah, I think they just need a little bit more communication going on, just a bit more cohesive. There was a lot of times where I could see them almost like stuttering on what they wanted to do, if they wanted to go in, go out, hover around. I saw it with Dino a good bit at that end there, where it's like 1v5, they weren't going to be able to save the, tr uh, the Nexus at the last moment. But just moments like that where it's like if you have that hesitation, you need to just decide which way you're going, which it can be hard. It's absolutely, you never know sometimes. But absolutely. Any play is better mm -hmm. than no play sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, and it looks like that Lucian was one of the biggest hitters for this entire game. That was a really impressive one from NKU. They had a 10 1 6. I'm impressed. Yeah, I was surprised to see the Lucian mid, but clearly mm -hmm. it can work. They knew what they were doing, which. I believe I wrote it down what their rank is, so I believe they were one of the highest ones. Oh, surprisingly, no, they were one of the emerald ones, but we do actually have, um, Cleave was actually master rank, which that is something to come to question. The fact that they have three on emerald and they have someone on master, most of our team hovers around gold ranking with a couple of emerald. I think that could like just show a bit more playing experience going mm -hmm. on between NKU versus CMU. But obviously rank doesn't mean everything. They could always step up, try something new. I wonder if they're going to try switching up who their opponents are, who they're going to ban, who they're going to pick. Yeah, I can. Oh, all right. Looks all right. like we are going to be moving to our break. So we will, we will see back. you soon for game two. Yeah, see you guys in a moment. Keeping you high on hope After it all, I know I don't need a reason to start again Keeping you high on hope After it all, I know I don't need a reason to start again 
Welcome back everyone. We're about to start round two in just a little moment. Um, I hope you all enjoyed your break. And right now they're just kind of setting up their initial like pick band thing that they like to do. Um, no one's really selected anything yet, but CMU will be on the blue side so they get to start picking first, which is exciting because that means they get to obviously have first pick, but also they cannot figure out what the other side might want and compare off of that. So NK, you could absolutely use that to their advantage by picking something that is a great counter pick. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to see the bands this time around because I wonder if CMU will ban any of the characters played by NKU last match uh, based on how that went. Like the, the Seraphine and Karma, again, they just had so much power in the bot lane that uh, they have just a ton of damage, so maybe we'll see some of those bans. But mm -hmm. I guess we just have to wait and see. Yeah. Same with NKU. Maybe that uh Cassante, you know, <laughs> that one kill they got on the on the Lucian. That maybe that's enough to push him over the edge and say no more Cassante for you. Yeah, they might just get rid of him entirely. They might be like, let's let's see what else we can make him do. <laughs> Um, nothing has happened yet, so... Yeah, just waiting around for, <laughs> for picks and bans. But we will see. So who would you say is the per person you like to play the most? I don't think I've asked you that yet. Oh, um, I, I, I like, have no favorite character just because I bounce around so much between them. But as of right now, definitely Zach. Just very fun character. You get to jump over walls and have some crazy engages. <laughs> And I'm definitely more of a team player than somebody who tries to go out and just win the game myself, which he is okay. definitely good for. You like those 5v5s, huh? Yeah, definitely. Okay, that's usually when it like drives my computer a little crazy. So like, <laughs> I like playing support for a while. I'll go be someone's Morgana. But mm -hmm. after a while, I'm like, okay, I need to find the person who's trying to solo it so I can make sure they don't die in the process. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. And NKU and CMU, just to update, still are just talking it out. Nothing is happening quite yet. It's like they are back in lobby. Yeah, they might be trying to figure out some technical difficulties because you guys might have seen some stuff has been going off the client, which it happens. We all have those days. Sometimes the computers do too. <laughs> yeah, first stream, so we expect definitely a little issues here and there, mm -hmm. both on our end and the teams and but definitely happens you know yeah. online games someone's internet you know their <laughs> cat's bound to walk over the router and turn it off so. yeah 
you look at it wrong one day and all of a sudden it's just not working right. (laughs) Accidentally leave the window open and all of your internet just goes out and you're Uh, at 700 ping. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. Looks like we are going to be waiting a little bit longer, (laughs) having some issues uh, figuring out the draft. Mm -hmm. But excited to see where this goes. Yeah. So how how long have you played? Do you know what roughly what season you joined in? Oh, um, I've played on and off for a while. Um, I started playing maybe two or three years ago. Okay. And I've recently got like back into it hard and just managed to convince all of my friends to. Um, but it looks like we are now into the uh, ban and pick phase. So a and lot of similar bands from last time. We see the Zach ban, the Vi ban, but... I do see a Cassante. Yeah, they this have time. got NKU banned that Cassante really quick. <laughs> and uh, CMU bans the Karma. She was definitely an issue for them. Mm-hmm. So she was a very heavy hitter in the beginning, and once she started, she was not stopping. Mm-hmm. She didn't take the most damage, but what she did hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see what their final two bans are. Oh, it looks like we have that Jax back. All right. Again, right, so hoping she... to see more ganks from the Jacks, especially bot lane, because yeah. they definitely got out of control. So mm-hmm. we need the third party to come in and help just take control, make sure that their bot lane is doing well. Yeah, a bit more, a bit more ganks and a bit more uh, vision control would definitely be nice, just in general. All right, it looks like we're also going to have a Varus on CMU's team, and Graves and Twisted Fate have been chosen so far by NKU. Which is not official yet because they're just doing the pre-draft stage, but could be useful. All right, it looks like a rel support, likely. Um, and Misfortune has been picked, so they might be doing their bot lane early. Yeah, um, it definitely seemed like a big issue for CMU last game was the poke. So. Yeah, and she's, she's very good at that. <laughs> I think Misfortune's obviously the first one I play. She's the one I picked from the tutorial. Let me tell you, <laughs> you don't have to be good to play Misfortune, but if you're good at Misfortune, watch out. <laughs> Definitely. And um, this is their ADC likely, which um, we'll see how that turns out because just the spray alts that the team had last game with the Lucian CMU was not able to get out of that, so... No. Misfortune has another just alt that just sprays out a bunch of damage, so is mm-hmm. uh, gonna have to play extra safe, know where the Misfortune is once she hits level 6, otherwise she'll just burst them down. Oh, definitely. And it looks like CMU has actually banned the Fiora and the Seraphine to handle that. So they have banned three of the players that they faced last time. It's definitely interesting. But NKU has chosen a Pike. And then we are waiting on CMU's next pick. I see that NKU has banned La- Lissandra, which is very interesting to me. I have not seen a lot of Lissandra players. She's a very rare pick, so mm-hmm. um, I, it's likely just personal preference for that player, whoever they're playing. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not a great matchup for them. And I'm seeing an Oriana from CMH. That's definitely going to be interesting. Where do you think she'll be headed? Um, most likely mid lane. That's okay. where Oriana is most likely seen. And then it's just down to what the final pick for CMU and NKU will be. Looks like we are waiting to see the uh, top laners on both sides. Yeah. And we've got a Yone on CMU side. And then it's just up to NKU. How are they going to want to handle that? Yeah, um... Picking first for top laners is always a dangerous game just because, especially if you're up there alone and the other team picks somebody who counters you, it can be a very rough match. But Mm -hmm. we'll see how this Yone does against a gank plank. Yeah, I did hear some noise out there from from our team. I'm not sure if that was a cheer (laughs) or a a cry of distress. (laughs) But I 
I suppose we'll see once we hop into the match, but there is going to be that three minutes wait after they do the official pick anyway. So we'll have to see how that goes. If they ever, if it ever sends us there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. we're back. Mm -hmm. We are back. And it looks like they're just sending some messages in their chat right now, trying to figure out just what's going on. And they are starting to pick their bands officially on the site. Now that they've had their little pre-draft moment that they talked it all out. And it looks like they're just following their plan, what they said on the other roster. Ezreal's banned. I've noticed that Ezreal tends to be banned quite a bit. It's very much a... You don't want to play against him ranked, because if you know how to play him ranked, you're probably doing really good with him. Oh yeah. He's definitely my go-to ban whenever I play ADC, because I am not mm -hmm. a fan of playing against him. Love playing with him, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, if the player's good, sometimes that is you true. get a real who's like, what, is, what do my abilities do? But mm -hmm. that's just par for the course. Yeah. And Aryone has been officially put in, along with the Gangplank. And in comes Graves on NKU side. It's almost taken a moment. But they have gone for that Jax. In comes Orion and Twisted Fate. Gangplank is going back for their band now that the first three have been chosen. I always wonder when they hesitate if that means they're about to change their mind, but <laughs> so far they're sticking with what they planned. And we're just getting some more bands going on. All right, yep, that misfortune up against Ari and Ah, oh, there it is. Was that who they had chosen originally? Yep. Okay, it was, it was. I might have just missed that. Now it looks like NKU is ha it has a AD focused comp. So mm -hmm. with that pike support with the misfortune? Mhm. Mm Along with uh, Graves and Gangplank, Twisted Fate, I believe, is the only person who would really focus on AP. Which, that may be good for him, because if they're all building armor instead of magic resist, that can be Just big potential. The way, yeah, <laughs> very fast clear. <laughs> yeah, Twisted Fate, with a blue card, he is very scary. Oh, yeah. A lot of burst damage you just get hit by it and half your health is gone so it's definitely something to look out for don't want to let him get out of control you say that as someone who's played him or someone who's played against him played him okay a very fun character i would recommend just throwing cards and getting <laughs> a bunch of kills see what happens let the cards decide your fate <laughs> All right, and then we do just have that three-minute spectator delay, so welcome back to us. Hello. So I'm not fully sure what I'll expect from this round. They've changed up a lot. They've banned a lot of the previous usage. So in a way, I like to think it's starting fresh, but now they're a little more familiar with what CMU's got to do against NKU. Um, I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm hoping that they'll get a little bit more momentum faster. Mm -hmm. Maybe try to take those drags, maybe warm, warm them just a little bit this time. Um, Vision definitely in the pit could be useful. Absolutely. Um, it just seemed like after the first two dragons, they just stopped going anywhere near it. And I'm not sure if that was Vision or if they were afraid to get another five on five. Uh, I definitely think it's the latter because at that point in the game, the bot lane had already been rolling so far that yeah. any team fight would be dangerous. They really needed to be able to get in and kill them a couple of times just to slow them down and, and even the score. Because like you had mentioned earlier, there was a large, uh, not just a uh, gap in kills, where I think uh, NK was six kills up, but they also had a big gold advantage. Yeah, it was so. like 6K and six kills. Mm -hmm. It was like right on that money marker. I was like, ooh. Do you think, what do you think Virus and Rel will do together? I just think they'll do. 
Um, I've not seen that combo. I know Varus. Um, he, I, I've seen him built a lot of uh, different ways. Uh, Lethality Varus is what most of my friends play him as. So it's mm -hmm. just one of his abilities, just a piercing arrow, and it does a ton of damage if you can hit it. So we will see how this turns out. Yeah, that will definitely be interesting to keep an eye out for, especially when that was uh, when bot lane was the first one to go down. I'm hoping that they can at least stand their ground a little bit longer. Maybe Jax can get leveled up a little bit faster and then come help them. But I'm also wondering if that means that um, the enemy jungle will also be keeping an eye out for bot lane more, trying to just push that through again. Yeah, it's very possible. Because they came down a couple times, I mm -hmm. noticed. It usually, it usually made a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Where Jax kind of just hesitated on where they wanted to go definitely we need mm -hmm. some uh, firm decision making and yeah uh, maybe that's in the communication or whether or not uh all of them are ready to go in or not so mm -hmm. that's a big feature just knowing when abilities are up and if everyone's ready to go in yeah looks like we have about 20 seconds before we're in the match um but with with the rel on cmu's team definitely gonna be playing more defensively because that pike will just be going in trying to put uh, their team out of position so then the misfortune can take advantage and kill them. So this row will have to be aware of that and ready to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we are in the game. Let's hope that the client loves us a little bit more this time. Um, NKU again is coming from the top side and CMU is going to be coming from blue side on bottom. Welcome oh, and it looks like they are choosing bot lane to just immediately destroy. They all five from NKU are running down bot lane. Yep, looks like NKU is going in for an invade. Ari is cut out alone. Oh, and Ari the pike. Oh, the flash to dodge it. So Ari survives that. That could have been very bad. But, but they have used that flash right away. Yes, that is one of that will take start. a while to recharge. But they are alive for now. Definitely in that position. Ari didn't have a choice, but mm -hmm. now they've lost vision in that tri bush. Luckily, NKU has seemingly gone back to their lanes and will not invade. But I do see that stuff is kind of hovering around. They have definitely got to keep an eye on that because that can be terrifying very fast if they start off with that two on one. But it looks like they may just be walking away from it. They got their intimidation and they're good. <laughs> Steph is going into their jungle. Very interesting. Ooh. And looks like the enemy bot lane is there too. But are they going to get the rel, but they do have vision there and that'll be a quick start to the fight. And it does look like Frost and Ari are trying to be a lot more offensive this time. They've done a good amount of damage to both Steph and I'm big, but Absolutely big they are taking there. some damage in return and leaving those minions alone for a moment. So that is a missed goal, but I think a good start for them. You see NKU's bot lane popping some healing potions, mm -hmm. getting their getting health those back up early. And they are hovering in the bottom bush. Whether or not Ari and Frost notice that is yet to be determined, but they are. Oh, and they've managed to dodge the pike's bush. It'll be very important for CMU to have vision here because that pike will be playing up and looking for any opportunity he can to pull them in in this position that bar is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alright, and it looks like Swag is facing off closer under their turret, up against. I believe it's Ice Alarm. Yes, they are up against Ice right now. They're just kind of hovering under turret. They're almost kind of just working around, doing their camps. It's interesting to always see them in the area and then just doing their own little thing for now. They've got to level up before they can really help with anything. So the Graves will be coming in, but just Dino enough to scare. is playing safe. I know it's trying, but the minions are running low, and that could be scary. <laughs> yeah, both top and bottom towers have minions crashing in. We see NKU spotlight backing up. They will go in for the tower dive, hoping to kill that Yone. But they will not get it off. They're getting close, but Dino is doing his best to stay alive right now. He's trying to defend that turret. 
Okay, so we've got some channeling going on. Right, Graves and the top laner are matching. That typical mid lane fight, hoping mm -hmm. to push the minions in. Velma is just taking the scuttle, has to watch out because they do have the enemy jungler up and they have been poked. Looks like that pike is taking that fight. Oh yeah, that's not the jungler, that's the support, isn't that? Yeah. Oh, he is running. And he is moving into mid lane, hoping to get a hook on his Oriana. Which he will not hit, luckily, for that Oriana, because oh, but as you can see, that's stunned. big burst damage anyways. Yeah. That rotates back to bot lane. Mm hmm and... Looks like NKU is just trying to take control of the map a bit more, even just physically walking around somewhere. Oh, and Steph is back! Oh, has absolutely the... tricked them. Yellow card, but manages to get out. It looks like Gray is going to just channel away along. Oh, why not? They have canceled that at the last second. I wonder if they just didn't want to leave their turret uh, to the grab. It's like Frost had early rotated up to mid lane, but it was too late as it was already over mm -hmm. but that is another thing that nku needs to watch out for because pike just loves to roam hoping to get any kills and especially once he hits level six that will be something to be afraid of because his ult can just execute you mm -hmm. it looks like dino is getting some work on right now which is definitely good they are pushing up they have to be careful of that turret damage of course but we see both junglers getting the, their objectives with Jax on the Void Grubs and Graves on the Drag, both going uncontested. Oh. Now between the two of these, if you could choose Dragon or Void, which one would you go for? Because I know being used to Dragon, I would automatically choose the Dragon. It seems more interesting to me. Definitely depends on the Drag, <laughs> but... If it is Mountain Drake, which I believe it is, I would definitely go for that because the armor and magic defense is very good. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for our top laner, it looks like Twisted Fate had rotated up to help get the kill. So they are down and who else has gone down in this time? Looks like our virus has gone down at some point. I hadn't even noticed that. A yeah, lot of stuff happening. Mm -hmm. um, Graves is invading, as we can see on the mini map. But just pushing wherever they can at that point. In bot lane, we see big trades going in. Yeah, I am happy to see Frost and Ari are trying to hold their own more. They are pushing. They're being offensive. They're being defensive. Yeah, it seemed like last match they. Didn't really have a choice but to play back as Seraphine kept bursting them down, but it seems a little bit different. Oh, uh, it's a little bit too late because Misfortune has taken down uh, Frost for a moment. Which, hopefully they can use that. Oh, it does look like they're using that moment to buy some items, which is definitely good. Sometimes you just need a little bit more to get there. Yeah, and luckily for CMU, they did have tower pushed up relatively far, so hopefully not too much tower plating will be taken. And we did manage to get those void gloves, so once we get to their towers, we should be able to burst them down pretty fast. Yeah, and Dino does look like he is backing, just took a little too much damage during that. But he needs to watch out because... Ooh! Oh, the Flash hoping to get the kill, but he cannot do it. Quite enough damage. Yeah, it looks like Cleave is just trying to intimidate uh, Dino right now, coming in, coming out, doing whatever he can to scare him off. But it looks like Dino did make it back in time, but that means that the turret is open for some damage. Now, unfortunately, Dino does not seem to have teleport, so he is forced to just walk back to lane as his gangplank just manages to get turret, uh, turret plating for free. Mm-hmm. Now, and we've got two and a half minutes before that next dragon comes up, so... Maybe CMU needs to keep an eye out on that one and start warding around it, but... It looks like the moment they step away from turret, uh, NKU is right there on it. Yeah, CMU is definitely lacking vision on their objectives. You'd hope that 
at some point maybe the support and bot laner could go up and try to get some vision on it. Or the top laner goes down and gets vision on grubs, but they are just being pressured so hard it doesn't look like they can leave their lanes. No, the moment they step out of line, NKU is on them right now. It's the aggressiveness I want to see. <laughs> but not the aggressiveness I want us to go against sometimes. <laughs> No, it looks like Velma is in the area handling one of their objectives. Hopefully they can get a little bit closer after this and Yeah, now would be the out. perfect time for a gang, although they do have vision in that tri-bush, so... But if they went around... Oh, and it looks like they are oh. going the right way. And big ants that are hovering right in that area, it would be perfect, especially with how it looks like they're getting some stunts off. Yes, slowing everybody down, getting in and there. And there we go! Misfortune is down. Field. And if they can get Steph going, oh, but they are all kind of backing up. Steph is trying to come forward. Is it to lead them towards them? <laughs> oh no, I see it. Ice and that is the Graves, yes. They are going Coming in, in for it. And Ari has gone down along with Velma. So far, only Graves remaining. Which is interesting because Ray is the mid laner. So for him to be down there already was kind of interesting. They didn't rotate very fast. But they do have one minute on drag. Dino's alive. But Cleave is right on them. The bot lane. Mm -hmm. If you look over here, yeah, Ari and Frost are coming back fast. Their turret is doing pretty good, above half health still, but they need to get rid of some minions real fast. <laughs> uh, again, we saw it last game, CMU is down 6 kills, so again, they really need to focus and stabilize, mm -hmm. otherwise the lead will just keep getting bigger. Yeah, especially with that 6k um, lead again. See Velma going in for the gank on top lane. Dino hits them with the knockoff. Oh, and the they're ult, done? And oh, they yes. See, and Velma is going for those assists that we've been hoping for, getting kills, getting assists. And they are coming back to get those uh, voids dealt with again. It looks like we're trying to stack them, which is always good because you can stack them. And if you get five stacks with the void grubs, they actually give you a little void mic to help you uh, attack towers. Ooh, but the break is coming in. Oh, never mind. He's, He's just yep. staying away. In his camps, and we, that is five void grubs, so even if the Graves manages to stop them now, it's too late. Mm -hmm. They will start getting some turret damage going on, which is definitely helpful. I did see that mid lane is getting hurt on that tower. With Gray being gone so long, it could not. It could be uh, pretty bad for that turret. Alright, and it looks like it's got a bit of a going on um mid and jungle have left they and that first turret mid. is down so hopefully that is where they're going to handle it and it looks like they are trying to um get a two-on-one against ice but ice is just backing away does not want to deal with that right now it's just not the priority they are getting some good damage off in the yeah. way but ari does see them we're getting a bit more oh but it is becoming and there goes Ari down to staff. I thought we were about to get a 4v3, but it looks like that has kind of scared it off. Undig did take down Frost, so now bot lane is undefended again. And Steph is just wandering wherever they'd like because they have no one stopping them. Yeah, unfortunately for CMU, they- Oh, but that damage. They chased just a little too hard because they were just hard focusing on that twisted fate and that led to them getting killed more because Spotlight just rotated up and managed to kill Ari there. Yeah. That trade in mid lane was very good. Steph tried to go for a quick um, flash in, but it looks like they actually took a lot more damage than they were expecting. So both uh, Steph and Gray have channeled back. Are we gonna go heal, get some stuff built up? It looks like Dragon is being hit by um, NKU again, it looks like uh, CM just is not going for that yet again. There's the ult from the Misfortune. 
Uh, Flynn down. Fate used his ult to get down there and hit them with a uh, yellow card, keeping them stationary and just letting that misfortune get all of that damage in for free. Mm -hmm. And it looks like our third dragon is going to be the Inferno Dragon, so that'll definitely be interesting. Mm -hmm. Which, I believe that that one could... That one would help a bit for CMU, so maybe it's time to get some wards down. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's just, that's gonna help with that attack power. MKU is not stopping with the pressure. They are rotating oh, from lane yeah. to lane, getting all Steph, of these Steph, once picks. again. He's hoping to hold his own mid lane, clearing the wave. And we've just kind of have the Rift Herald just sitting around. No one's really bothering with it yet. We do have a two on one going on up in top lane, but. Oh my, it's with the halt and the magic. Get the kill. And just in time for Ice coming in. Can they do it again? They're getting him airborne. Well, we see the flash oh. come out. Oh, and then big spike mid lane. Oh, uh, I'm... I'm big. Mark has gotten again. big very fast. That is true. And it looks like they kind of left top lane just without that kill. Um, Cleave is on very... Or Cleave is on very low health, it looks like, up there. But they just have not finished that. But we can see that Gray is trying to get into the area. Oh, and there goes that tower. Will Gray be able to finish her off? Looks like they're having vision, but cannot seem to see right now. So would be a little dangerous for Gray to go in. Especially, Especially with Steph coming in again. Steph does not give up. But we do have Ari and Frost coming in, followed by Big, which can be terrifying. And it looks like uh, Graves is going after that Rift Herald. So. We have three in top lane versus their two, but they are rotating to Rift Herald mm -hmm. instead of fighting. Which is definitely the play there. Although the pike is keeping up the pressure, making sure that CMU does not push up and cannot contest the Rift Herald. And Red did take that Rift Herald, so they are once again taking objectives faster. <laughs> Steph is very bold right now, but for good reason, as CMU does not seem to be able to contest them. Especially with Frost and Ari getting chased down by um, four of the five members right now. Looks like they're just kind of going to wander away from that turret, leaving it just open. Will they be able to make something happen here? Oh, and out comes the Rift Herald. Oh. Graves will just pilot it into the tower, dealing a massive chunk of damage. Mm -hmm. team fight, but... And Steph has taken down our Varus. MKU is just cleaning up these kills. Although, yo, no. Absolutely insane. Got the shut down. And it looks like it's just Dino versus Ice right now. Okay, and that turret is helping. All right, we see Twisted Fate's yellow card is down, hiding in the bush, but continues to retreat. And Motlane is just going on. Oh, and they took that stun damage from Ice very fast. Just that yellow card is just absolutely mean. It just locks you in place, and then Twisted Fate can hit you with his other ability just to burst you down for massive damage. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Frost is having to back very fast because he is on very low health right now. It looks like most of them are hovering around uh, the bottom half of the map right now. There's a bit going on in the jungle, but for the most part, they've kind of just left the top half alone right now. I think they've kind of realized this is the easier side. Let's just keep pushing through. Yeah, absolutely. And here comes Steph again. Dancing around, but it looks like they're trying to find one opening and that's all it'll take. Gray yeah. is on the defensive though. Steph is just completely playing by themselves, so. If CMU can group up and catch them out, that should be a pretty easy kill. Although, I don't see that will happen. Especially now that Chaos and I'm Big have come back in. These steps go in and just sneak out. 
Frost is in there, but uh, it's just a little too late. They got too much damage going on before they fully got there. It was a good try. I appreciate the offense. You see Dino get the kill on the misfortune. But Velma has gone down to food, and another turret has been destroyed. It looks like the... It looks like um, top lane actually they have someone in our uh, right up in our uh, yeah the twist of fate is pushing top lane unfortunately so Dino is doing good things but it's not enough if that if they just keep split pushing because Dino cannot be everywhere at once unfortunately for CMU and Frost and Ari once again just picking it out together trying to do their best to be a duo but it's hard when they're constantly separated by death. <laughs> Alright. See another fight going in as Steph goes in and goes back out, but Elma manages to hit the stun, but it does not matter as Steph just recovers all of that health with Pike's passive. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Cleve is just sitting in the corner playing around with some rocks over here. Not even worried about the fights going on, you know. NKU is doing pretty good right now. They've got an advantage. It does look like the next dragon is out and the Rift Herald is about to be. But is it even going to distract them <laughs> when they're so up at neck and neck with each other right now? At this point, the Graves can just focus it as the, key, as the rest of his team continues mm -hmm. to push power and Absolutely. CMU will not contest it. Especially with another blue turret being destroyed. Red team did already get that dragon. That was very fast. And it looks like, oh, there we are again. Perfect. No, with that 9 and 23 going on, it looks like it might be uh, already a bit too down to the wire. Of course, they could turn this around, but they just need to get some quick kills like that. That kill from Jax is really good. Oh, but Velma has gone down in return. Dino does have big potential here, but <laughs> that is limited to the cooldowns on their abilities. Because if they don't have their ult up, then that's a lot of damage that they don't have available to them. Mm -hmm. We've seen it multiple times in these fights where Dino just comes in and completely wipes somebody. But It's all about when they get the chance to. Exactly. And it doesn't help that right now their team is being split across their own home base because every turret is getting attacked. All of those turrets are down and it is the inhibitors next. Dino and Frost Somebody are trying to protect. But... Mm -hmm. The game fight is bad. A blue inhibitor has gone down. We will start seeing those super minions coming through very fast. But it looks like it's mainly just uh, 5v4 right now. Misfortune coming back mid lane. Going to be a 5v5 very soon as they take mid inhibitor. And down goes another. Yeah, Steph is just on their way. They know what they want. Jimmy just needs to find an opportunity for one of them to flip off so they can take them out and take advantage of it. But mm -hmm. they're playing very safe and very together, so it is hard to do so. And all of them have left now that those inhibitors are down. They're just backing away. They're going off. Where they're going, it looks like maybe the... Um, <laughs> And Steph seems to bait them into their team as he manages to get two oh. kills with his ult. And this may be it for CMU. Yep, down goes Dino. It looks like he just died. Swag. Oh, kill. and there goes the ace. Now, that is a team kill. Nobody left to contest, so they get these powers and nexus for free. There it goes, NKU taking it 2-0 against the enemy, and that will be the end of the first round. I will say, I'm proud of them. They went a little more offensive. I did like the push that they were trying. I saw both um, up on top lane, they were definitely pushing more into the turret, and then... The immediate damage we saw from Frost and Ari was definitely impressive. Mm -hmm. um, I think just in the future, just trying to be a little more aggressive, even if they're not fully certain, is never never the worst thing. So Frost typically doesn't play support. They're filling in, right? Yeah. Um, one of their main players has um, is currently away for a wedding right now. So they've got a little bit of a mix-up going on. So I think on Wednesday during our next match, um, tune on in. 
it'll definitely be a little bit better um, with I, people a little more sure of their own roles. Oh, and the next game will be against Western. So if you're from Central, you understand that rivalry. It doesn't just extend to their football team. Oh, yeah. It will be fierce. So <laughs> tune in. Might hear some shouting all the way from the cast again <laughs> to the, uh, where the players are. But we'll come back to that when it comes to that. All right. And I saw a lot of great things from our team, even though we lost today. So yeah. a lot of things that they can work on and improve mm -hmm. and hopefully win against Western. Yeah, so thank you all for coming. Um, it's unfortunate we lost, but again, it is the first round. So just thanks for tuning in, and hopefully we'll see you guys Wednesday at 8 against Western. Fire up!